I live on a street that's incredibly well tied together. We, we barbecue a lot, we converse a lot, we hang out on the front streets and the front porches and watch the kids moving up and down the streets and it's a really tight-knit community. Um, one, one barbecue, I remember two or three of the neighbors saying, boy, I sure would like to have some heat back in my garage. And, uh, and the, the most obvious way of doing that would be to connect the uh, natural gas line that goes to your house back to your garage. Well, that was the land of the conversation, other than one other point, which was everybody recognized that to do that, you needed to get a building permit from the city. About six months later, uh, one of my neighbors decided, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to put, put in the building permit with the city and, uh, and see what they say and see if I can get that going this summer. So he put in his building permit. It was probably December when he did that. And usually it's a two to four week turnaround, but six weeks went by and he didn't know what was going on. And he kind of scratched his head and thought, what, what the heck? Why? So he phoned up and said, what's happening with my building permit? And the city said, well, you realize you involved your neighbor in that building permit. Why is that? Because he had a huge maple tree between his house and the garage that he didn't want to impact. The only way to get to his garage because of sewer and, and, and buried hydro lines was to go into his neighbor's yard and then back around to his garage. So the, neighbor, the first time the neighbor even heard about this, this uh, process was when he got the application from the city through their eyes. Hey, by the way, your neighbor wants to tear your fence down and, and dig a deep hole through your, uh, your wife's garden, which is, you know, roses and, and vegetables, so that he can have heat to his back garage. Well, and the neighbor, having never heard of this, having never even talked to his neighbor about this issue, got his back up right away and said, what the heck is going on here? So he right away wrote all the reasons he wouldn't want this to go forward, sent it back to the city, and the process was stalled. Or maybe even it was objected to and just decided it's not going to happen. Now another neighbor four doors down, realizing he wanted to do the same thing, decided to phone up his neighbor and say, hey, can you come over for a dinner? No problem. They got together. They've talked over the fence a lot about the kids, about their wives' jobs, whatever. And uh, he got together and over dinner they discussed, hey, by the way, there's an issue here. I really want to get heat to my back, backyard, but that big beautiful tree that you guys l talk about loving so much in the summer because it provides you shade in the spring, summer, and fall, it's, it's, we don't want to touch that tree. And I can't go the other way because of other issues that are already there. And the tree's grown around those, the sewer and other things, so I can't go that way. So my only option is to go through your yard. And I know that's a huge imposition, but you know that fence that we've got between us, it's 20 years old. I could buy a brand new fence if you were, if you were interested. And I know that your brother-in-law, over conversations, because it's communication, it's iterative process, your brother-in-law runs a landscaping company. Why don't we hire him to build your wife a much, much nicer garden, tiered, something along those lines, totally on my bill. So the conversation went forward, and in fact, at the end of the day, it was the neighbor who was kind of pushing the project. It was the neighbor who said, you know what? Why don't, I, why don't I write you a letter of recommendation? I mean, my brother-in-law is a pain in my you-know-what. He's always talking to my wife about this and that. I wouldn't mind some support from him because, you know, if I can get him working on this, it would be great. It would solve two problems, you know, it's a win-win. Now, I realize this is a very simplified, and you can poke all kinds of holes in this analogy. But nonetheless, I think you see where I'm going, right? You've got impacts to land, but you've also got opportunities. You've got something in the center of your lands, which, are, which is really important to both of you. It could be represented as the environment, that maple tree. There's an opportunity for both parties, but most of it has to do with having an early on discussion, right? It has to do with trust and a relationship, positive communication, and at the end of the day, a respect 